Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. It's a stash with Stephanie Day and that means we're coming to you with a brand new fat quarter friendly pattern that's been inspired by this month's collection that we sent out to all of our subscribers of the Stash with Stephanie Club. I really love this much design. I was inspired by the diamond hexes of the grandmother's flower garden, but not like the hexagonal shape but the diamond one that is in all the vintage quilts. So this one's called Vintage Revisited. We are doing the same kind of look, but with strip pieced squares. So it's gonna be a lot simpler, a lot faster, no hand stitching required. We're gonna do everything with the sewing machine and you'll get kind of the same vibe. We've done this before where we took like a pineapple block and we simplified it significantly so you can get the same vibe without all of the work and the time and hours and hand stitching that goes into doing the more complicated version of it. But this one is gonna be a really fun one to use it with. We've got Pippa Shaw's Arcadia this month. It's a very bright and fun collection from her. So it really, and there's florals in it. So it's gonna evoke that diamond grandmother's flower garden, you know, elongated diamond look. It just, it's a perfect one. The digital version of this just looks absolutely fantastic, so I cannot wait to make it with you guys here today. All right, before we get to take a peek at the fabric and also uh, learn on this tutorial, we're gonna talk a little bit about Stash with Stephanie. It's a subscription club that we have here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous, and we have got about 800 members in it now. And each month we send our members 10 fat quarters from that month's collection. And 10 fat quarters is not quite enough to make a quilt, but it is a it is a good amount to make a quilt or to get you started. You can use it to just put in your stash to make maybe a baby quilt or two, um, or just you know hang on to it until you find the perfect project for it. That's fine. You don't ever have to get any additional fabric, but if you choose to, we design a pattern that's been inspired by the fabric, and we use all of the skews in it. So you can definitely go and pick up the additional fabric. We call it a finishing kit. It includes the five fat quarters you didn't get, plus background and binding fabric. So you have the entire collection and you can either just save it for another quilt or you have absolutely everything you need to make the project as we've put it out there. Super fun. People really enjoy it. You get a discount both on the subscription, you get a discount on additional uh, fabric that you purchase for being a member of the club. And then also you get that free pattern every month plus access to all of our previous Stash with Stephanie patterns. It is a lot. So it is a large value that you get right away. You get access to those patterns. And then you also get 30% off my Fat Quarter books, Fat Quarter Patch for Quilts and Fat Quarter Workshop. Fat Quarter Workshop is and was and still is a bestseller. So that is a good one to have. Um, but I say this every single month. Every single month we get questions about it. So the way this works is everybody who has a subscription payment in June will have their bundle ship around the 20th of July. We do this for two reasons. One, so we can make the correct amount of bundles and two, so that way everybody gets the same chance at getting additional fabric because when we put this out to our members the fabric can sometimes go really fast and sell out so we want to make sure that everyone has the same opportunity to get additional fabric a finishing kit maybe some background or some some backing or maybe additional fabric for borders or maybe you just really love the collection and you maybe you don't want to do that project that we've come up with but you have something else in mind and you need some fabric for it you can get that you can get your discount on it but it wouldn't be fair if we sparse it out all over the place it's all it got to all go out at the same time everyone needs the same chance to get additional fabric so our members get a 24-hour head start on that and we do sell out sometimes so before it gets to the general public watching this on youtube or in our email list so it's a great club to be a part of especially with you know inflation it has hit the fabric world too people so if you are trying to quilt on a budget and trying to hang on to prices from like 2020 um, you can save uh 20 percent on your stash with stephanie additional fabric purchases if you are a member of the club only so that's a great way to maybe keep your quilt budget quite what it, what it was what it used to be before 
everything was so expensive. But anyway, so that's the deal. Go check it out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. You can see the collections that we have featured in the past. So you can get an idea if you like uh, my style and what I'm picking for you guys. You can also see all the patterns that we've done over time. So you can see if that's something that you're vibing with, but it's, it's a fun place to be and you can really have a lot of fun with it. We have a lot of people who do. All right, let's get into Arcadia. We're gonna take a peek at that, and then we're gonna get into this quilt that is totally strip pieced, goes so fast, it's gonna be awesome. So this is the third time, I believe, that we have featured Pippa Shaw for our Stash with Stephanie Club, and every time we featured her, the fabric has sold out. It's just such bright, cheery, fun fabric, perfect for working on in the summertime, or also if you just need a pick-me-up, because it's just, it's fun. It's gorgeous, I love it, but it's definitely modern and contemporary. This one here definitely works as more of a basic. We only have a couple of colors going on here, but I love the organic nature of those broken up ovals, it's really fun. Next, we have a fun lighter orange print. Really, again, only a couple more colors, and it looks like florals coming out, just a really basic minimalist flower coming out with little star uh, buds at the, at the points, but really fun. Here we have that same print that we started with, with those uh, ovals with the stripes in them, just this time with more of an orangey pink background. Now we're into one of the really eye-catching, fun, feel-good prints. We have lots of really fun florals on here, lots of different colors of pink, orange, and yellow. It really ties together what we've seen so far with this pink, purple, orange colorway. Later, we're gonna get into more of a blue teal colorway. Um, and I just love how this one turned out. It's really fun. Here's that, a little minimalist floral bouquet again, this time with a kind of white cream background. This could work really well as a background fabric. We're not using it for this quilt. We're gonna use a different uh, basic that Figo has, but it is really fun, really pretty. This one is like so, I don't know, it's giving me 70 vibes a little bit because of the, the fun, or maybe 80s, with the fun color combination here. And it's just a bunch of, stripes, it looks like marker uh, stripes with that you've just put on there. It's a little thicker in one end than another. But again, we're doing a great job of tying in the colors that we've seen so far. This one will make a really fun binding. All right, we've got another really large floral here. You could consider this a basic as well because we're not dealing with a lot of different colors here, but it is kind of a bigger print and it is definitely some good contrast to the petals in the background. So it's just a fun one. This one also looks like clusters of flowers. And really, again, we're not dealing with a lot of different colors here. So this also could work as a basic, but when you combine it with everything else we've seen so far, it really helps to accentuate everything we've been looking at, make it look really pretty. All right, this is the last of that pink, purple, orange colorway. And we have some really cute little petals coming off of a hanging tree. It looks really pretty. All right, now we're moving into the blue teal colorway. We're starting with that spray of bouquet of flowers. That's really that tiny scale print, this time in blue. Here's that larger floral again, and a more electric blue. Here's that really fun stripe print again. And while there is a hint of peach in here, it is mostly reading blue. This one has little white and lavender petals against that teal background. So gorgeous. We have the clusters of flowers again. This one is just so fun in that really deep blue. Now we're gonna wrap it up with that show-stopping floral with all the different colors in it. I just really enjoy it in this really deep background. It makes all the florals pop and it is gonna be really fun to use with this. Now, because there aren't like big like look at me prints like this one and this one obviously is. This is a great collection to use when color matters in your quilt. We've done that several times before with Pippa Shaw's collections where we use the color to help transition the block. And we're gonna do that again today where I'm gonna start in the center of the block with these lighter prints. And as I work out further, we're getting to the deeper, darker blues. So pay attention to that. You don't have to do it exactly that way. You certainly can mix it up. It's your quilt. You can make your own decisions. But if you want to have yours turn out like ours, just pay attention to the placement of where you're putting your strips of fabric. And you can follow the guide in the pattern if you're looking to how to make that work for you. All right, so I'm gonna go and cut these up and we're gonna start sewing. 
So we're gonna start off with some strip piecing. The majority of this quilt is strip pieced. It makes everything go really fast and a lot easier because instead of cutting a bunch of tiny little squares and rectangles, we're able to sew a bunch of long strips together, cut them apart, and put them back together in a much faster way. If you guys have followed me for any length of time, you've probably seen this technique before. It's kind of our thing to make complicated looking patterns look a lot, make, make them go a lot easier. So this is probably a refresher for a lot of you, but if you need one, here we go. All right, so I'm starting by laying out everything for my row A. And this is important to keep all your selvages on the same edge. Some fabric companies have really thick selvage prints and it can eat up a, almost an inch of your usable width. And we wanna make sure we have 21 inches from where the print starts to where it's cut off at the fold. You can see some of them are a little longer, some of them are a little shorter, but if you start with all your selvages on the same end, then you're not gonna lose an inch over here and maybe an inch over here because we wanna make sure we've got enough when we start cutting everything apart. All right, so I've got these laying out. I'm just gonna flip them right sides together and I'm just going to do both of these at the same time. We're just gonna stitch a quarter inch seam down both sides um, where we were joining these. All right, so we're just gonna grab that strip. We're gonna put it under our presser foot and I've got the edge lined up with my presser foot so I can sew that quarter inch seam and I don't ever pin this. What I do instead is I just kinda pull it up and make sure my lines are together and then put my hands on top to kind of hold everything together. And then I'll let the feed dogs pull that up. When I can't hang on anymore, because my fingers have hit the top, I just repeat until I've made it all the way down my strip. Now, when you get to the end here, what you wanna do instead of not being able to hang on is just go ahead and move your finger to the side. That way you can maintain that accurate quarter inch stitch all the way down. Now you can and should chain piece these. To do that, you're just gonna grab your next one and if you've got a whole stack of them, then do that by all means. It makes it go so much faster. And you're just going to lift up your presser foot and slide the next one under. You want a little bit of a gap there because that way you're not gonna be overlapping your fabrics and you can just cut those threads in between apart later. Now it's totally normal for your strips to not be the same length. This one's ending here and this one comes way further out. Don't worry, we're gonna square everything up later. Now you could press at this point, but what I like to do is just save that all for the end when my entire strip set is put together. What I do every time though, is I do lay everything back out. That way I make sure that I've got everything in the correct order, all my selvages are still on, on the right side, because you wanna know now if you've accidentally flipped it over because it's a lot easier to fix it at this point before we've actually stitched anything. All right, so now we're just gonna flip these guys right sides together and sew down here. All right, so now we're taking our strip set unit and we have all of our seams facing up and I will die on this hill, people. I always press my seams open when I'm strip piecing. I get a very, very straight seam, whereas if I'm pressing them to one side and I'm doing this constantly, it tends to make them curve up. And then, especially when you have four of them for this one, then you can't get straight rows at the end. Everything's all cockeyed. So I think this is just the way to go. You get the flattest joints. Everything is really fantastic. But to get going, what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up that seam with your fingertips. You're gonna put the point of the iron right on the middle of that seam. And you just keep your fingers down, like three fingers down ahead of it. And that kind of pre-presses your seam open as you work and you're able to really just get that really good and flat. Now I do use an Aliso iron. Those are fabulous. Uh, they're a little pricey, but they are absolutely fabulous. And I have this wool pressing mat and that combination together is just fantastic for getting super flat, super gorgeous seams. Just look at how perfectly straight these are. We would not have gotten these same results if we pressed to the side. It would just start to kind of curve up as we got further and further down that row. Now, one final thing I do before I call this ready to cut apart is I'm gonna spritz each seam with my spray mister. I do not like to use water in my iron because I feel like it gets super gross over time. And as we already talked about, the Aliso is not a cheap iron. So what this does is, and I also feel like it's super easy to distort your fabric when you use steam is I give that a little spritz 
and then I go over it again with my iron, just following that seam line, and that gets it super, super flat, absolutely gorgeous results, especially when you combine it with that wool pressing mat. It's just really, really amazing. All right, we are ready to cut. The next thing we're gonna do is cut six rows out of this one strip set, which is what makes it go so fast because instead of sewing six individual rows of four squares each together, we just sewed four strips and we're gonna be able to get six rows out of that. It's so fast. Now there's two ways you can do this. If you are concerned that your selvage is kind of wide, I would start cutting from the end that has the fold on it because you can always use a little bit of the selvage when you're cutting things apart, as long as it's going to be within that seam allowance so it doesn't extend over more than a quarter of an inch. But um, you, can't, you can't add more fabric. So if, if you think that you might not have quite enough, that's the way to go there. So we can actually give a measure here. Remember, we wanna have 21 inches. I've got about 21 and 3 eighths, so I could start from either end and be fine when I'm measuring from my shortest piece to where that selvage is. Then I'm right about here. So it's actually, it's almost 21 and a half. So that's good. I could go from either direction, but I'm gonna go ahead and start over here because again, it's sometimes a little safer to give yourself some wiggle room from here. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna move over as far as I can, and I'm putting an inch line, any inch line is fine, down the center of that seam. And then I've got my measurement, I'm cutting to three and a half inches here. So I've got that going as far as I can to where I'm not gonna be going off of the strip. So that's like right about here is where I need to be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a cut. Now for this first one only, we need to flip it around and we gotta even out that edge. So we're going to flip that around. This is called squaring up. We're gonna again put an inch line right down that center. Now we want that three and a half inch exactly on the line that we just cut and we're gonna trim. Oops, that happens sometimes, you can get a little off. I cut like a little, a little sliver out of here, but it's fine, it'll be in the seam allowance, it's not a big deal. If you did get super off, uh, again, that's why you, we're starting over here. So we got some wiggle room down here. So it's, it's all good, it'll be fine. All right, so I'm gonna put this over here for now. And now I'm just gonna keep on cutting down. And if you get off at any point, say like, you know, you put, go to put your inch line on here and it's like super crooked in other places, like you just want to make sure always that you have your inch line straight here and then you've got a nice 90 degree angle. And actually I don't because I, I made that little oopsie there. So this is hanging off just a smidge. So we're just gonna square it up again. It's not a big deal at all. Um, you don't wanna have to do it for every single strip piece unit that you do or you might not have enough, but one here or there is totally fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this. Square it up again for my little wobble earlier. Then just keep working my way down. All right, so we have a bunch more strip piecing to do for both of our full blocks and our half blocks. We're just gonna zoom through that with some fun music montage because it's the same process, it's just a different combination of strips. So we'll come back when we're ready to put our block together. All right, so we have two kinds of blocks to put together. We have whole blocks and half blocks because the setting is a little offset. So we're gonna start with our whole block. And here's the beauty of this one. We don't have seams to match when we're putting this together because it's kind of offset. But we do kind of wanna pay attention to make sure that our seams are on top of each other here when we're getting everything together. It's really super simple. I'm gonna show you how while we do it. 
All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by placing our fabrics right sides together. We're gonna ignore this piece for right now um, because it's an odd number and we can only sew two together at a time. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So just because we don't have anything to match up doesn't mean I'm not gonna pin. This is a really long piece. We've got different numbers of seams in each one. It's really easy to get off just a smidge. And we just wanna make sure that we can ease in anything that we need to. So I'm gonna start by pinning my corners first. And then I kind of just spread that out. So that way my center is mostly in the center there. Now we're gonna repeat that process with our second set of rows. All right, now we're gonna take and sew these rows together using our standard quarter inch stitch. Now when you do pressure seams open, sometimes when you go over this little hump here, it can flip your seams going the wrong way. So do be cognizant of that. What I like to do is once I've got a seam that's past it, it's just lift it up a little bit and everything will fall right back into place. Now again, we absolutely can and should strip piece this to make everything go faster. Now for this one, I do like to press after sewing each row together. Again, we're just gonna open that seam between our fingers. We're gonna put the tip of the iron down, and this time instead of sliding it across, you're gonna wanna make sure that you lift and press because we don't want the iron to accidentally flip any of these other seams going in another direction. Now, one other thing I do here, I'm gonna spray the seam and set it, makes it super flat. Now, when I'm doing this at home, I'm doing all 18 blocks at once. I'm not doing one at a time because again, that's gonna take you forever. But if you're doing them and you're just in a rhythm and you're doing all the steps at once, you're gonna get through it a lot faster. At this point, I'm like one and a half days in on sewing on this quilt and I've almost got the top done. So it's really super fast. All right, it's coming together. So for this one, I'm gonna go, I always like to get the third row attached to a twosie as I feel like it's easier to manage under the sewing machine when you're doing that, as opposed to sewing one row onto one that's already like a full block size. So for me, I like to do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this together, stitch it, press it, and then do the same with this seam, and then we've got a block together. All right, there's one point that I have to tell you guys. So in order to make sure that all your center seams are nice and lined up, this is all you have to do. When you get to this step, and you can see the rows alternate. Every other one's got a seam going straight down the center of the row. So when you have one where it's gonna overlap like this, you just wanna make sure that the center of that seam is lining up with the center of the seam that it is touching below it. And as long as that's fine, pop a pin in it and you're good to go. It'll be just fine. It might shift a little bit, but it will not be visible to the naked eye when you actually go and do it. All right, so that's the full block. It's super fun. It's gorgeous. I'm loving it. And we've got a half block to make too. It's very simple. And we will have one more block at the bottom and the top that gets put together when we are actually assembling our quilt. So we'll get to that in just a second. In the meantime, I'm gonna lay out the half block just to show you what it looks like, but the assembly is the exact same. So we're gonna music montage through that too.
All right, so I've grabbed some block and sashing components so I can kind of talk you through what happens when you sew this quilt together. I mentioned before that there actually is gonna be another top to this that gets sewn on when we sew our sashing together. So you can see this all really clearly in the diagram for this. Again, it's called Vintage Revisited. You can get it on our website, shop.quiltatexanonymous.com. But I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out for you. I'm gonna start with a row that begins with a half block. So we're gonna put that over to the side and then we're going to put our full block and then we have another sashing strip and then another full block. So lots of options here. I might actually wanna flip this around because this is basically the same fabric there. So let's let's give that a swap. And you know, you, you make your choices because then if I do that, then these are the same on the top and bottom. You know, whatever, it's fine. We're working with a limited number of fabrics here. Everything can't be perfect. All right, so I'm gonna assume this is the start of the row here. And now we're gonna put our sashing in. So what we're gonna start with, if I can find it, is a little sashing rectangle. So this is referred to in your pattern diagram and your cutting instructions. We're just gonna put that up top. You'll notice it is the same width as our half block, that's important. Then we have our sashing strips here. This is also strip piece. The instructions for it are in the, um, diagram it's the same process we did before just this piece here is a different length again all in your pattern so we're going to lay that out so you can see that kind of fits in right there and now we're going to throw on a different one and you can start to see how this is going to work so now we can see that we now have our top half of our block that is created when we sew all this stuff together so it really is fun and i really like the way that this looks and it turns out and even though right here, we're not gonna see that there obviously isn't a block below it, but there will be one above. So that's always my fun challenge when I'm coming up with this stuff is just to think, okay, how can we do this? Like I wanted to create something where everything was kind of offset, but not have to do like fancy complicated seaming or anything. And so I was like, oh, let's just do the top and bottom of the blocks be sashing because then we have a whole box to create, we have a half box to create, we can make a bunch of those, and then they can sort of be finished as we assemble the row. So I think that this is really fun and I think it works out really well. Let's move that, let's not, well, I guess they're both the same. Here, we can do this. This is where you kind of have some fun at the end where you flip things around and decide, oh, well, I don't I don't want this here because I got both of those, so let's, let's move that around a little bit. So that's an example of a row that started with a half row. Um, you're are gonna start with your half row, sashing strip, full block, sashing strip, full block, and keep on doing that until you get to the end. And your rows up here are always going to start with just your plain rectangle, then sashing strip, sashing strip, sashing strip, sashing strip. So super easy, not a big deal. We're gonna switch it up just a little bit. We're gonna pretend that there's no half row here. So in this case, we are gonna start off with a full block and it just gets moved over like this. You can see everything still meets up so that it's in the centers like this. We're still starting off the same. So it really is a, a pretty quick process. I just like to lay everything out of my bed, decide where everything is gonna be and go from there. So it really is, is fun. It doesn't take a lot of time and like I said, I'm about a day and a half into this and I've got half of my quilt top assembled and I have all the blocks ready to go and sashing ready to go for the rest of it, which I will do after I finish filming this video. So super fun. I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull out the two rows I've already assembled so you can see it once it's all done. All right, so here I have two rows assembled. This one here is starting with a half row. You can see that I do not have the sashing on so that that block hasn't been like completed just yet. But when we slide it up, we can see how this works, where when we put this sashing together, this piece here creates the top of that block, and then the next one creates the bottom. So that way we have this really fun design that's created, it's very angular, and it just is really, really fun. There's one thing that I wanna call your attention to. So in all of the center rows, so not the top and bottom sashing row, you're gonna see that this piece is every other block because we're always starting or finishing a block. But for your top and bottom rows, we don't have a block to finish down here. What we have is just 
white space. So in that case, every other block is actually going to be from your background. So just pay attention to that. We put asterisks in it for all the sizes on the layout diagram so that way you would call your attention to it. But like say you're making the crib size, it's not gonna specifically have a white block here because it wouldn't be there if it was in any of the larger sizes, if that makes sense. So just look for the asterisks for the size that you're making and know that when you see that asterisk, it means that that needs to be a background square because we don't have a block to finish here. So that's just what you gotta watch out for. But I love this quilt. I think it is so fun. It is just, comes together really quickly. I was really going for the look of that, not the grandmother's flower garden, but the vintage diamond that's created from hexagons. I wanted to create that and have it be offset, but obviously a lot faster and a lot simpler. And I think we've done it. I think it looks really good. I'm thinking of ways that I can quilt this to try to get it to go quickly, but also honor like the angular modular design of this. I'm, I'm, I have to ponder that. We'll see. We'll see if I have all day tomorrow to quilt this or just part of the day. We'll see how the day goes. But anyway, that will be fun and I'm very much looking forward to it. All right, thank you so much for following along with today's tutorial. Again, the pattern is called Vintage Revisited. And if you join our Stash and with Stephanie Club, you can get this pattern and all of our other Stash and with Stephanie patterns for free once you join. And as long as you're a member, you get access to all of those free patterns. You also get a special discount on the fabric bundle that we're going to send you. It is less than retail price and we'll send you 10 fat quarters each month that are all from the same collection. You get first dibs on additional fabric so that if you want to take those 10 fat quarters, add on another five plus background and binding, then you can make that month's quilt design. You never have to, but it's an option for you. Or you can get whatever you want. You can get some yardage or some other stuff and do whatever you want to do with it. Almost all of our patterns use background binding and yardage. Most of them come in multiple sizes. You can go ahead and check out our website to see some of the previous patterns that we've done. And if you go to the Stash and Stephanie page, you can see all the previous lines that we've done so we can see if we fit your style. And if that's a nice surprise you might want to receive in your inbox um, every single month. Now, just a reminder, if you sign up by the end of the month, then your first bundle will be shipping around the 20th of July. If you wait until July 1 to sign up, then you're gonna be waiting until about August 20th to get that shipping notification. We do that so that everybody has the same chance of getting additional fabric when we do release the pattern, uh, because sometimes it does go fast. And, you know, inflation is real, it's crazy, and people are staying home and, and doing more things at home again. And so that, that includes some sewing. So people have been spending some money on fabric and it does tend to go fast when we have a really pretty one like this one from Pippa Shaw. Um, also, you get an exclusive discount on additional fabric if you are a member. So a good way to save some money on fabric and we all could use some ways to save some money on fabric right about now. So. Anyway, check out all the goodies. Go to shop.quiltaddictsnavis.com. We'd love to have you in the club and send you some goodies. All right, until next time, happy quilting. <music>